Hello everybody, it's William and today we are in Scottsdale, Arizona for the Academy for Future Science Easter Seminar. Uh, we are here with the founders for the Academy Future so for Future Science, the ineffable Desiree and JJ Hertoff. These two people have, for the past 40 years, have been working diligently to connect the dots of our ancient past with our cosmic future. It's building a platform for individuals like ourselves to work off of and begin at a higher state of understanding. So today, I wanted to ask them a few questions. One, the importance of the multidimensional aspects of our being in this time, and a message for the youth for what we could be doing now. All right, I'll start, and uh, I'm Desiree, so it's great to be here. William, and thanks for joining us this weekend. I, I think the most important thing is that to get beyond the fact that all there is is this planet with a three and fourth dimensional reality. You know, we're in three dimensions, which is length, width, and height. That's why we're kind of more than two dimensional beings. And then fourth is actually time. This is what Einstein said. But in our reality that we have done research on, and also Dr. Jack had a unique experience, there are fifth, sixth, seventh, eighth, up to 24 dimensional realities. And there's beings that exist in these other realities. And I think the most important thing is that those beings interconnect with us. So I'll start with that and we'll hopefully continue that conversation. Right, <clears throat> we live at a time where information is accelerating. And uh, what we're seeing is a, a global brain being developed from the satellite downloads that young people can go to. And we're very excited that we are beginning to realize through the explorations being made in consciousness and the new physics that our mind is capable of distant communication, distant healing, distant conversation. This work was done at Stanford Research Institute in the 1970s and 80s. And Desiree and I have been privileged to see some of this literature be put out in a book called Mind Dynamics that we are co-authors of. In the essence, uh, we're beginning to realize we're all interconnected, not only through our genetic code, but the way that we are beginning to look at the vast uh, dimensions of the universe requires us to realize through mind extension, through the research that's been pioneered by the astronauts in outer space, such as astronaut Mitchell beaming energy back and information back to human biological targets without technology that the power of the mind, the power of consciousness, is really the way to the future. If I can pick up on that for just one minute, uh, you wrote a book, Dr. Jack, uh, with Russell Tarr called End of Suffering. And that's really important because what this research is about is, is remote viewing. That's what it's called scientifically, and you could Google that. But what it means is we can be sitting here and we can pick up exactly, and they've proven this beyond a shadow of a doubt, you can pick up exactly what's going on, say, in Russia or in Africa or in South America. And the way you do this is you just realize that we are all vastly interconnected. And you don't use your rational mind to figure out what it is. You actually use almost like a subtle mind. The first thing that comes to, into your mind is usually a very accurate rendition. And they have been able to find airplanes that have been ditched. And they've been able to um, just take coordinates. Uh, this is one thing that actually the CIA gave to... Um, to I believe Joe McMonagall was one of the people, and Pat Price. You give them just coordinates. They found a down Russian airplane yeah. in Africa. But that was one thing. But the other thing is they just give them a north and east-south coordinate. And the remote viewer doesn't say, okay, well, if it's north this way and south that way or east this way, then it must be, you know, such and such a place. They don't do that. They just tie into the numbers of the coordinates and they exactly go to that point. And in some cases you can even go underground. One of the things was a target, just a test, was the uh, Louisiana Superdome. And this is way back, this is in the 70s. And even though one of the remote viewers was standing outside sending information, the other one was back in California. It could have been anywhere in Louisiana. In fact, they did it for several days. So there were different points all over the area of the city of New Orleans. but the guy was able to actually go inside 
the location. So places that even the outside remote viewer who was sending the information couldn't see. So this is something that we really, we don't use it. You know where we do start using, it? and this is so cool. How many of your viewers have like, before you pick up the cell phone and look who's there, already know who's calling? The great intuitive signal. Now the Russians also were doing this type of work of mind over matter projection of consciousness we know and we have worked with Professor Trofimov and Kaznacheyev in Novosibirsk. We're interested in the non-military use of the power of the mind and that's, we, that's why we as independents have looked at the indigenous people in Africa and South America and the shamans or the social psychologists who way back hundreds of years ago developed the power of sending mind signals information without the use of technology. We're coming full circle now and we're realizing that information must be used for humanistic purposes. It must be positive. We must realize we're all interconnected. We must go beyond the old paradigms of seeing things only in a competition. We must see ourselves in a role of cooperation. Right, and we can make this a better world by using that gift. And the cell phone thing is just a practice. I mean, if you start realizing, just before you even pick up your cell phone, see who's there in your mind and see how accurate, and you'll start developing this. It's almost like a third brain, literally. And once you start doing that, then you can send healing to places. You can send uh, energies of peace. You can literally send positive energy, and it should be always positive energy, out to these various peoples or places that you So the bottom line, and William, this is very important for your audience, is we must go beyond the culture of death, negativity that blocks us into suffering, and realize we have positive potential to reach out to the global brain. We must see our life as a culture of peace, a culture of joy, and this is the excitement with young people who are looking for answers beyond the box, who began to realize they have counterparts in all parts of the world. So we're developing a new world civilization at this time. And the fantastic stories that we can share are available on our website and those of others, such as our colleague Russell Targ, our website. FutureScience.org, and we also have a Facebook page called Keys of Enoch.